Last week saw the release of the 25th issue of the Dr. Afra comic and the end of its fifth arc called the Catastrophe Con. The previous storyline saw Afra working for the murderous droid Triple Zero to recover his memories until she was arrested by her Imperial on-again, off-again lover, Captain Tolvin. She is sent to work on a Kresker jail, basically a mobile junkyard made up of 80,000 tons worth of wrecked starships. The purpose of the prison is to ram it into combat zones, damaging the target before deploying the prisoners as enslaved soldiers. All of the prisoners are required to stay near what's called a hub droid while they fight, or a proximity chip installed in their bodies will explode. When Aphra isn't fighting for the Empire, she undergoes interrogation at the hands of her overseers, who know she is hiding important information. She doesn't waste any time before thinking of an escape plan, but it's foiled by what appears to be a Force ghost. Despite the failure, she makes friends with a fellow prisoner, a changeling, who fixes a transmitter that allows her to call one person for help. She calls Tolven and tells her the big secret the Imperials are after. Darth Vader plans to overthrow the Emperor after turning Luke to the dark side. Knowing the Imperials will seek out and destroy anyone who knows that means it's in Tolvan's best interest to rescue Aphra before they find out. Meanwhile, General Hera Syndulla hires Sonastaros, another former lover of Aphra's, to break her out of the jail and bring her to the Rebel Alliance because they need her to unlock some military intelligence. And Triple Zero begins to seek her out once he learns that she had his memories decrypted. So Aphra basically has Rebels, Imperials, and the Underworld furious at her, but also desperate to see her safely off the junkyard prison. Sana and Tolven arrive just as the interrogators begin thawing out a boar to question Aphra. They both attempt to rescue her, but again their plans are foiled by the supposed Force Ghost. This time, Aphra investigates and discovers a sentient fungus called Hook Spores have grown around the ancient corpse of a Jedi taking on some of his noble characteristics. The Jedi also still has his lightsaber, a relic that would fetch a high price on the black market. With everyone now trapped on the prison, Aphra is forced to undergo Boar interrogation, but she's able to keep her secret about Vader hidden and instead claims she was hiding the hook spores. So the Imperials cut their losses and set the prison on a collision course with a known rebel planet, abandoning the prisoners to die. Tolvin secretly sends a scrambled message to Darth Vader telling him about Aphra, hoping he will be inclined to stop the prison's destruction and personally ensure her death. In yet another gambit, Aphra reaches out to her former associate, Tam Posla, who has been hunting for Dr. Evazon since Rogue One. She tricks him into believing her changeling friend is Evazon, so now a fourth party works to infiltrate the prison. Aphra convinces Sana to escape in a pod before Posla arrives, and the hook spores attempt to latch themselves onto his sense of justice. Aphra freezes the fungus and trades Tam a shuttle for the frozen body of her changeling friend. Aphra and Tolvin recover the Jedi's lightsaber, but as they attempt to escape in the shuttle, Triple Zero arrives and shoots them down. With only seconds to survive, Vader arrives in the Executor and catches the pile of junk in his tractor beam. With Vader on his way, Aphra returns to the boar and asks Tolvin to use it to effectively erase her memory, thinking it's the only possible way Vader would let her live. Instead, Tolvin uses the boar to change her memories of Aphra. By the time the Sith Lord reaches her, she truly believes that she has killed Aphra for her many bad decisions. He takes her into custody, but Sana returns with General Syndulla to evacuate the planet and attack the Imperials. Vader believes Tolvan is killed in the attack and returns to the Executor. Sana recovers Tolvan and takes her into Rebel custody. Meanwhile, Tam Poslo realizes Aphra duped her with a changeling and returns to arrest her. Triple Zero stabs him in the back, likely killing him, but then Aphra's changeling friend disables the droid and stuns her. They escape, and the prison crashes into the now-evacuated planet. When Aphra comes to, the changeling reveals that he has been Dr. Evazon all along, using some sort of bioengineered creature that can change its appearance. Since he's a mad scientist, he installs the hub droid technology into Triple Zero, forcing Aphra to stay close to the murderous droid at all times, and he sets up the photoreceptors to transmit everything they do to him so he can watch the carnage. Ponda Baba shows up and they depart, leaving Aphra and Triple Zero alone. Okay, so that was a lot. This has probably been the most bizarre arc of this comic so far, with semi-sentient fungus, floating junk pile jails, and changelings who aren't actually changelings. 
It was bordering on going too far for me at times, but one of the things I really appreciate about this series is how they really swing for the fences. I feel like this is the most liberated Star Wars story going on right now, and even if it gets really weird, it's almost always interesting. Vader gets a ton of awesome moments as he rampages through the prison, throwing his lightsaber at X-Wings, destroying the hook spores, and even BT-1. I was shocked they killed off the little droid, and maybe Tam Posla too. In my heart, I want to believe he's still alive, but if I'm being honest with myself, I mean, come on, he was stabbed and then set on a collision course with a planet. I'm really into setting up Dr. Evazon as a new antagonist. I was not expecting that at all, but he seems like the perfect, over-the-top, evil-for-the-sake-of-it villain for a series like this. And of course, I'm a big fan of the Triple Zero character. I'm very interested to see how he and Aphra work together now that they'll be forced to, and I'm curious to know how he'll cope with the loss of his counterbot. Something I'd like to see in the future is a return of more intentional treasure hunting. I love that we still got a glimpse of some ancient Star Wars history in this arc, but I'd love for Aphra to go looking for relics on purpose again. That's where I feel this comic is at its best. But what did you guys think of Dr. Aphra's Catastrophe Con? Was it too weird for you, or were you into it? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.